Hi everybody, this is Amanda Ellis of amandaellis.co.uk Facebook page Angelic Celestial Colours making a video for you on February the 8th 2017 in preparation for two powerful eclipses that are coming in to our world personally and collectively this February. The first one is on February the 10th and 11th. It is a lunar eclipse tied into a full moon in Leo. So that's a real mixture of different energies. Um, then we have a solar eclipse on February the 26th, which is a new moon in Pis Pisces. And I'm just being shown by Archangel Metatron, who is the energy that I particularly channel and work with, if you haven't um, tuned into my videos before. I'm being shown that there are two distinct parts to February. And I'm saying February, and I know I'm making this on the 8th of February, but it feels as though this has been practice run, actually, for the main bit of the month where we're about to step into. The first half, which is to do with the lunar eclipse, feels as though it's a time for great reflection, introspection, um, solitude, if possible, switching off, going within to contemplate and take action on what it is that finally needs to end or let go of or anything that has come to completion in your life. And this particularly is tied into anything that you may have been dealing with in 2016, which is still for some reason hanging around, you know, Maybe you've been waiting on commitment. Maybe you've been waiting on closure. Maybe you've been waiting on um, completion in, in any field of life. It could be related to house move. It could be related to health. It could be related to the ending of a relationship. It could be the, in relation to the um, completion of a job or a proposal. But it's something to do with an ending and a completion. Um, and... It feels big, to be perfectly honest with you. It feels as though it's really amplified by this Leo energy, which is just sort of wanting to charge ahead now into new territory that comes in towards the end of the month. Um, so we've got like this lion energy with us, this Leo energy, which is about courage and strength and raw determination, wanting to make the most of this lunar eclipse that we've got. The fact that it's on an 11th day as well, tied into Archangel Metatron, I talk about the 11 a lot. Um, again, a powerful, powerful gateway, um, very much also to do with duality as well. So be very aware of your thoughts this first, um, this, on, on this first eclipse. Don't sink down into victimhood. Don't sink down into lower self mentality. Don't get too distracted by the troubles of the world, even though I know that they're bad at the moment. Try to, try to rather than being lowered by it, try to reignite the light that you have within yourself so that you can then come back towards the end of this month to make a difference. Now, what I felt guided to do was to pull a few cards um, linked into the lunar eclipse energy. And I'm gonna do a bit, a bit differently this month. What I'd like to do is actually pull a card which is a sacred, geom sacred geometry card, okay? And I'm using this deck, which is by Francine Hart, Sacred Geometry. And this is more to do with a symbol, okay? Asking Archangel Metatron for a symbol for the lunar eclipse energies for us to meditate on or integrate or just think about, really, because they all come with a message as well as an energy power in their own right. So let's ask him, which is the one that we need? And I just want one because they're all quite keen to have their say, actually. I've tried to make this video a few times and they've been flying out all over the place. So let's just have one. And it needs to be one that sticks out, which is that one. OK, the good old square. OK, hexahedron to give it its correct name. <laughs> um, number 18. Number 18 for me also is tied into the energy of money. Um, money has been coming up as something in the collective for all of us to look at. 
over the last few weeks. How do you earn your money? Um, how do you value money? Do you view money as an abundant thing or something to do with scarcity? The hexahedron, the cube, is linked into the base chakra, which obviously is to do with issues to do with abundance and money as well. Be very mindful of your thoughts towards money, actually, at this time. Um, and as much as you can, don't go into scarcity, poverty consciousness. Really important to hold money in terms of it being a, um, a high vibrational um, energy that is here to help you rather than it being something that you're having to um, scrimp and you know scrap over let's see what the, the message is with that card number 18 though the hexahedron because it's one we're being asked to meditate on so we know that this is one of the what they call the platonic solids it's a um, uh, a very powerful symbol in its own right it is one of the symbols that is actually within Metatron's cube. And I, I teach about this in my level one work, um, which you can find up on my website. So I don't want to go too much about it because it's very much linked into training that I've already got up there and that I do. Um, but yeah, it's a platonic solid. And I'm going to read what it says here. It says, pulling this card finds you seeking order in a situation that seems out of your control. You believe that you have given your best to the matter of your inquiry, but you're feeling boxed in, without room to move. It may be time to consciously step out of a confining situation in order to view it from a larger perspective. You may simply need a vacation or a little time away from everyday cares. Or perhaps this card ushers in a time of major change, where you will be required to act in a manner that is not customary to you so that you can break free of the confinement that you are experiencing. Before you act in a radical manner, step out of the box and see, seek a new perspective. Talk to a friend or a wise counsel and most definitely ask for inner guidance from initiating radical change. You know, the cube at the end of the day is about foundations. You know, it's linked into the base chakra, so it has to be about foundations. And I feel as though our found, some of our foundations have become too small. I'm, I'm certainly feeling that in my life at this moment in time. You can't grow and stretch out and expand unless the foundations are in place to support that growth, okay? So that's one message that's here. But also listening back to what I just read out there, it's about feeling confined, feeling boxed in, feeling a bit stressed. And so what we have to do is we have to think about that. We have to think about maybe is there more support that we need at this time? Are there more people that we can bring in to help us? Um, and that can be on many, many different levels. Um, what else do I want to say about this cube that's it's simple. I'm hearing the word simplicity from Metatron. Keep it simple. You know, um, we've made our lives too complicated. We really, really have. And we we are doing too much, I feel, a lot of the time with our lives. So, you know, try to sort of rein it back in a little bit. And it did talk about here, vacation, time away. I've just actually come back from a few days just being offline. And it did me the world of good, actually. And I know I'm talking to you online and there's nothing wrong with being online. And I will continue to be online. But I'm going to regulate my use of it. You know, we don't have to be online all of the day and all of the night. You know, it's better to just drop in and out of it and then get on with your day. That's the way to make... Um, the online world work for you rather than sink into an online world which actually diminishes the real world that's out there wanting to, you to come and play with it okay um, the hermit energy has been very very strong over the last few months and I feel as though that hermit energy it's not just been about um, the need to go within as we've talked about it's been to do with the fact that we've all felt maybe a little bit isolated and, you know, I feel as though this this box energy that we've got here, this cube is saying, you know, break out of that a little bit. OK, so um, seek new adventures. I want an affirmation card that goes with that. And I'm going to use this set of cards, which is the Devic Nature Insight Cards by Ursula Selwood. Um, they're very beautiful. Uh, I'm going to pull one 
and just see what the affirmation is for us around this lunar eclipse, okay, on the 10th and 11th. What do we need to be affirming to ourselves at this time? I'm not going to look as I'm doing it because they've all got beautiful colours and otherwise I'll get distracted by the colours. Okay. That one. Okay, see the beautiful colours of that and the message, the affirmation that goes with that mandala is I am at peace with myself. Can you say that? I bet a lot of you can't, okay? I, I'm not always able to say it either, but right this moment I can. I am at peace with myself. Shall we just connect to that together? And to do that, I'm going to just spray the water elemental, which helps us get in touch with our emotions. And of course, water is ruled by the moon. So this is what we're aiming for, this full moon, this in Leo, this lunar eclipse. This is what I want you to be saying to yourself. Whatever is going on around you, whatever is happening in the world, I am at peace within myself. Just feel that. I am at peace within myself. My foundations are strong. I have the support that I need. I have the time and the space that I need. I have the time and the space that I need to sort through and process my emotions that arise at this time and may well become inflamed or overblown, but I can still find the peace within myself. I'm going to pull one card that goes with our moon and I'll pull it from the same deck, the, uh, the fifth tarot just so we've got some consistency there. What is the card, the one card that goes with the moon? For 10th, 11th of February and the few days after that. What energy are we in? That one's coming through. I think that came through. Did that come through in my last video? I can't remember. I've definitely talked about this card sometime recently. Okay, and what I am drawn to talk about here is the number eight. It's the eight of fire. The infinity symbol, okay? The infinity symbol. I'm just making sure I'm drawing it the right way because I know it comes back to front on the camera. So the infinity symbol feels as though it is reminding us at this time of the eternalness of our soul, of the eternalness of life, of the eternalness of this planet, of the eternalness of love. Feeling the energy of love wanting to come through and blend and fuse with you. Have you got the raw courage and fire energy within yourself? To really love yourself, to really be able to love another, to be able to look somebody in the eye and tell them that you love them this February. Fusion, fusion of energies, fusion of fire and water coming through very, very strongly might come back to that card in a moment. I just want to push on now to the sun. I want to push on to the solar eclipse on February 26th, which is a new moon in Pisces. So new moons, obviously, when we're setting our intentions. Um, let's see what sacred geometric symbol we get for that. How does it feel towards the end of the month? I feel as though, I'm, I'm being honest with you here, it feels as though we may be a little bit tired, <laughs> even though we've had some days out. But I just think that's because it's a bit like when you've had a really good cry. You know, you've had a really good cry and all the emotions have come up and then you're feeling at peace with yourself. But you have to get it out first before you can get to that place of inner peace. 
I just feel as though there's a bit of inner work coming up, okay, for the next couple of weeks. And then we get to a place of that beautiful stillness. You know what it is like when you cry and it's upsetting at the time and obviously it's emotional and then there is this beautiful softness and silence that comes in and of course it comes in actually because when we cry there is a stress response we're releasing stress from the body and then the body can almost be oh you know at peace again it's a bit like when you make love actually and you know you've you've had orgasm and then you just get to that place of peace again i don't know where that came from but that's that's what i'm feeling it's like the the respite by the end of the month we get to the respite there are some heightened emotions before that though okay what's the sacred geometric symbol metatron hmm two but before we before we look at that one really interesting I just said orgasm because it's not usually the sort of thing I'm talking about on these videos but we've got the seed of life I think that there's going to be some really special souls conceived this month <laughs> so those of you that are trying for a baby I'm being serious here um, I've said this in previous videos that this is a time where some really special souls are coming into our world. Um, the seed of life, um, to me, it, it's linked into the conception. You know, when the cells subdivide straight after um, at, at conception, they, they subdivide into this sort of form. So I'm feeling this is actually about birth as well. Um, let me read the message, though, that goes with card 33. And 33, of course, is the Christ consciousness as well, which is absolutely unconditional love. Um, let's see what 33 says. Beginnings of change. OK, the seed of life shape. Remember, this is to meditate on is six circles or spheres that complete one full rotation around one circle. Um, it forms a six petal flower. It's sometimes referred to as the Genesis pattern because the book of Genesis says that creation was formed in six days. So the seed of life is a key to understanding the expansion of new energy, of new information and new light as it enters consciousness. Pulling this card marks the beginnings of change in the progression of your inquiry. You've left the security of the centre of home, of the known, and you are seeking a new way of looking at the world. Yours has become the path of the seeker. You are beginning an adventure that may become the passion that will fuel your life's work. Oh, it's so perfect following what we were being asked to focus in on at the start of the month, which was the cube, which was like, just feel that, you know, feel the confines of that. Are you feeling confined? Are you wanting to break out of the box? You know, um, and if you're going to do that, are your foundations strong enough to even support that process? And then we sort of work through that. And then we get to this, which is that, yes, you can and you have broken free and you are expanded. And what do you want to create? Pulled with that is card number 32, which was which is this beautiful image of Leonardo da Vinci's um, I can't even say the words. I'm not going to. Leonardo's man, I'm just going to say. I'm going to cheat and wimp out of trying to say that word. We all know that image. Do we know and understand what it actually means? Let's read about it. Card number 32. It's the divinity of humankind. Um, right. It's included here in this deck, they say, because it's a key that helps us unlock a cosmic code about our humanity. Um, Leonardo da Vinci's drawing contains the entire system of sacred geometry, including the golden proportions of pi, um, the mechanics of the human energy field and the Merkabah. Choosing this card indicates that you are in search of an ideal, perfection, although elusive, remains your quest. Beyond sim simple perfection, what are you looking for? It may be the perfect partner, the perfect job, the perfect living situation or the perfect body. Sacred geometry demonstrates that the ideal exists at all levels while allowing infinite variety and form. Learning to accept the perfection in all things, including yourself, 
and the truth of absolute perfection in every moment is the message of this card. Oh boy, if we could really, really, really integrate that, that everything is actually perfect, everything is perfect, including you. How would the world feel then? What would our affirmation be then if we could really, really believe that? Should we pull an affirmation card and see what, would, what it would feel like? Okay. Because we don't. We, we look out of the window and we see the imperfection, you know? We see the fact that the sun isn't shining. We see the fact that at the moment there are no flowers out there. We don't look and actually just see, my God, it's beautiful. I'm so lucky to be alive, you know? Um, we need to start looking at the perfection that is there every single day, in every single moment. What is the affirmation that we need to help us with that? This one. <laughs> you saw, I, look at it. I am just perfect as I am. I <laughs> love that. I really, I'm so, that's so beautiful, isn't it? Because that just shows the energy we are tapping into here is spot on, okay? This is divine guidance just coming in saying, we are going to ram this message home until you get it. We've just been talking about everything is perfect. And we pull the affirmation card and it's a really simple card. It's a beautiful grey background, actually. And I was looking out at grey skies and I was thinking, where's the sun? And it's saying, look at that greyness. It's actually beautiful. It's actually beautiful. I've been talking about the fog and the greyness and actually appreciating the beauty of it recently. And the pink, the energy of love. I am just perfect as I am. Can we say that to each other? I'm going to spray the sunrise new dawn. This is what we want to be getting to by the end of the month. Whatever has happened... Whatever is going on around us, I am just perfect as I am. Breathe that into your heart. Breathe that into your throat. Allow yourself to say it. How does that feel? Does that make you feel emotional? I hope not. The more that you say it, the more that it becomes a reality. Okay, let's pull another card then that goes with our energy of the sun. And we've got the beautiful sunflowers here as well. Let's see what guidance we have for the lunar, sorry, the solar eclipse on February the 26th. What goes with that energy for us? Oh, gosh, stop it. No, that one... <laughs> Sorry, that one was like, no, I want to come out. So I'm going to let it come out. The emperor. <sighs> what can we say about the emperor? Well, we can say lots about the emperor, but I'd like another card that goes with it. The immediate thing that comes to mind, to be perfectly honest with you, is, and again, I have talked about this a lot recently, there needs to be a new blueprint for man upon this planet and I'm talking about the divine masculine here it's very interesting I've been talking to a few people over the last few weeks um, including some people I met at a fair and um, we were talking about the divine masculine and you cannot push it you can't push the divine feminine over the divine masculine it's not either or it's both and we are being shown at the moment in our world it's being really highlighted that the old patriarchal energy does not work. And this new emperor, this new emperor energy wants to come in and um, help lead. And he wants to do so softly. We've got the seeker of lotus that goes with him, which is rather lovely. And the dragonfly, which, which is, again, a beautiful symbol of transformation. The emperor energy, and I'm, I'm talking here just about the male energy. And I'm also, I'm not just, I'm talking about your male energy, okay, um, wants to come through in a different way. Um, let go of old patterns, old ancestral patterns that you may have learned down your male line. Um, let a softer energy come in. Um, be this beautiful man here 
who is comfortable with the whole world. You know, he's comfortable with the earth. He's comfortable with the sun. He's comfortable with nature. He's comfortable. He's, he's exposed here. He's vulnerable. He's half naked. And he's, he's OK with that. You can actually see his heart. You know, the heart isn't covered up. He hasn't got a tie and bloody suit on. He's, he's there. You know, he's showing you who he is. Um, he's got children, you know, he's, he's a good father. Um, he's in touch with his emotions. He's beautiful. I've never looked at him before and seen such beauty, you know? Um, and next to this, Leonardo's divine man. I feel this is collective, actually. It's as though this is the start of a new I'm feeling quite emotional because it's just, it's so needed. It's so needed on our planet. When is it going to stop otherwise? When is it going to stop this hatred and this, what is male aggression, male war? We have to let him come through. And he lives within us is what I'm hearing. That beautiful energy of the divine male lives within us. I'm going to spray the hope energy because I've just been taken over by the energy that's here. Let's spray olive hope. She's linked into the Divine Feminine. But let's create some space for the Divine Male. Let's balance your male and female also with that olive ray. The seed is planted. The tree will grow. The time is coming for this energy to flower. It cannot be stopped. It is here. It is here. Just pick that card up and it says Divine Doorway. You see that? There's a Divine Doorway opening this February. There are some things that are not going to be allowed through that Divine Doorway. I think there may well be some events, whether it's globally or personally, but I'm feeling global as well where we're going to be shown that the old ways are going to be blocked. Mm. I want to leave it there. Much love, everybody. Just take that beautiful hope energy into your heart once more. And we are going to affirm together. I am at peace within myself. And I am perfect as I am. Namaste.